Like most of you guys, I've been stuck indoors, trying to figure out stuff to do. Now, fortunately, I've had a lot of extra drawing time, which has been really nice. I've been thinking a lot about artists throughout history that have been stuck in their houses and have been inspired to create representations of their homes or sometimes their studio space. The most famous example that came to mind was Van Gogh's painting of his bedroom in Arles, France. In his time here, he created some of his most famous paintings. If you look closely, you'll notice that he included paintings of his own paintings on the walls. Now, there are older examples from art history of paintings of home interiors, but many of them focus more on the people inside than the places themselves. More recent work shows broad variation in style and tone. For example, these interior paintings by Matisse and Liechtenstein reflect their love of saturated colors. Lucian Freud and Richard Diebenkorn spent some time painting their sinks. Diebenkorn's interior seemed to reveal his eventual shift toward more abstract work. Speaking of abstraction, Texas-based artist Trenton Doyle Hancock created a series of paintings based upon a beloved tile pattern in his grandmother's kitchen. And Korean artist Do Ho Su has created entire replicas of his homes out of translucent fabric. Look at this piece by Carmen Argote, where she displayed the intact 720 square foot carpet from her childhood home with all its scuffs and stains. This was her representation of home. Interior illustrations come in many different styles and you should feel totally free to explore your own unique approach. And if you get really good at this whole drawing places thing, you can start selling your work online. When I told my daughters about this idea of creating representations of spaces that we're spending a lot of time in lately, they both got right to work creating virtual reproductions of their bedrooms in The Sims and Minecraft. For my drawing, I wanted to create a representation of my new classroom space here, also known as the guest bedroom. And lately I've been really interested in what's called isometric drawing. You may be familiar with drawings like this from certain video games. This style was used frequently in early English and American technical illustrations. Though it was originally pioneered as a way of representing space in Chinese and Japanese woodblock prints. One of my former students creates illustrations in this style using his iPad. This is a drawing he made exclusively for this video, showing his quarantine space. Here's a quick time lapse of how he created his drawing using the Procreate app. You can check out a lot more of his work here. For my drawing, I thought it would be best to start with the basic floor plan so I could figure out how to divide up the space. Once that was complete, I began to sketch out the room on a scrap of cardboard. In isometric drawing, you have three basic types of lines. You have diagonals that go this direction, diagonals that go this direction, and you have vertical lines. And all these lines should be parallel with each other. If you don't have a ruler at your house, any straight edge will work. Because I'm creating a representation of my new virtual classroom, I wanted a way to symbolize the presence of my students. So I created these rectangular shapes to represent the cellular phones and laptops that I'm communicating with them through. I also included a few silhouettes. I was fortunate enough to find an old ruler in a junk drawer. This made drawing straight lines a lot easier. If I need a clean line at the edge of any area of shading, it's easy to just bump my ruler up next to it. That limits where the pen will go. I want the side of this desk to be completely black, so time to pull out the big guns. Here I got so carried away with drawing that I forgot the camera was there. Do you guys mind? I'm trying to work here.
At this point, my cat came to check out my drawing, but he wasn't impressed. Here I'm using a red folder to keep my hand from smearing the fresh ink that I just put down. I wanted to add some white to the computer screen to get it to stand out. I had a few options, but ultimately I chose to go with a cut paper. I really like how the white paper looks like it's glowing on this cardboard background. I printed off some emails I received from students over the quarantine. Then I cut them out and collaged them into some of the screens in the foreground and background. I also wanted to include some emails that I transcribed by hand. At this point, I wanted to quickly fill in some of that background space. All my good paints are left up at school, so I decided to try to use food coloring. I started with a mixture of yellow and purple, thinking that would make a good brown color. I tested them out on a sheet of cardboard and then got started painting. Painting with food coloring is similar to watercolor, but it does have its differences. For example, you'll notice the color change as the food coloring absorbs into the cardboard. What starts off as a reddish brown turns more of a purple color as it dries. At this point, I was pretty happy with the drawing, but I really wanted that computer screen in the middle to be the focal point. So at first I used a pencil, and then I used a gray marker to make the screens in the foreground and background a little bit less bright. So here's my finished piece, a mixed media representation of my virtual classroom and my internet-based connection to students.